Hello everybody, I'm the Tutor Wizard. What we're going to do today is look at the power series representation of a couple of functions. In particular, what I want to look at is the powers of representation of uh, arc tangent. So, actually, let's do arc tan x and arc sine x. Arc sine is going to be a little bit more complicated because we're going to have to use the binomial expansion arc tangent we can get around this by doing a couple of clever tricks. Let's use term by term differentiation and or integration to and some clever the geometric uh, power series representation to try to find the power series representation of a couple uh, useful transcendental functions. So first of all what we want to notice is that 1 over 1 plus x squared the integral of this dx is equal to arctan of x. We're going to now focus on this guy. We have a relation between this polynomial and integral and arctangent. Now what we're going to cleverly do is term by term integration and find a power series for this and then term by term integrate it. So actually let's flip that around. So I have arctan equals the integral of 1 over 1 plus x squared dx. Now what we cleverly do is write this as the integral of 1 over 1 minus negative x squared dx. Now I can use the geometric power series representation to write this as equals the integral of the sum from n equals 0 to infinity of negative 1 to the n x to the 2n dx. Then what I can do is I can switch these or do term by term integration is what we're allowed to do and I can write this as the sum from n equals 0 to infinity of the integral of negative 1 to the n x to the 2 n dx. Negative 1 to the n is just a number which could also go on the outside of the integral but now I can just use the power rule of integration and use term by term integration and this becomes the sum from n equals 0 to infinity of negative 1 to the n and then we get x to the 2n plus 1 over 2n plus 1. This is essentially, now we've created where, if we've used a clever couple tricks, what we used was the geometric series representation, power series representation of this specific function, and then we use term by term integration, and I get the power series representation of arc tangent. So let's clean that up and give the final expression. So what that gives us is arc tangent of x is equal to the sum from n equals 0 to infinity of negative 1 to the n x to the 2n plus 1 over 2n plus 1. Now what we're going to do is find the radius of interval of convergence for this and see where we could put x values. Only where this converges do we have a meaningful expression for putting x values into our tangent and using this to compute values. We'll see in a second once we find the radius and interval of convergence why we would want this. But the limit as n approaches infinity of a n plus 1 over a n in absolute value is going to be negative 1 to the n plus 1 x to the 2 n plus 3 over 2 n plus 3 times 2 n plus 1 over negative 1 to the n x to the 2 n plus 1. Then this is equal to the limit as n approaches infinity of the negative ones cancel automatically because we have absolute value and then we have the absolute value of x to the 2n plus 1 times x squared <clears throat> times 2n plus 1 over 2n plus 3 times x to the 2n plus 1 in absolute value. Now we can see this one cancels with this one and we're going to get equals the absolute value of x squared which is just x squared limit as x n approaches infinity of 2n plus 1 over 2n plus 3 which is equal to the absolute value of x squared which is just x squared times 2 over 2 which is x squared. This is less than 1 if and only if what? What are we going to get? Or this power series converges if x squared is less than 1 or 
what are we going to get with that? For convergence, we need x to be less, x squared to be less than 1. And this gives us x squared minus 1 is less than 0. And this is if and only if x plus 1, x minus 1 is less than 0. And this gives us a table from negative infinity to negative 1, negative 1 to 1, 1 to infinity. And then we're going to have x plus 1, x minus 1 and then x squared minus 1, and we want it less than 0 this time. Another application of nonlinear inequalities. I want to know when this thing was positive or negative for my radius of an interval of convergence. So quickly, I see that this will be negative and negative, so I'm going to get a positive, and that's not what I want. Here I'll get positive and negative, which is a negative, which is what I do want. And then I'm going to get plus, 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 so no. This is true if and only if x is inside negative 1, 1. Or they might say negative 1 is less than x is less than 1. But that calculation I just made is how they make this decision. Then I have to check the endpoints to see whether they have convergence at the endpoints. So right now what I found is I'm centered at 0. And then my interval is from negative 1 to 1 possibly. And now I need to know whether I can include the endpoints. When x equals negative 1, we get the sum from n equals 0 to infinity of negative 1 to the n times negative 1 to the 2n plus 1 over 2n plus 1, which is equal to the sum from n equals 0 to infinity of negative 1. So what we're going to get here is n plus 1 over 2n plus 1. This is convergent by the alternating series test. I'll skip the details. Now what are we going to get? What I did here was I used a clever bunch of exponent laws. This is negative 1 to the n, negative 1 to the 2n plus 1, which is negative 1 to the 2n plus n plus 1, which is negative 1 to the squared times the n times negative 1 to the n plus 1. And then this will become 1, so this becomes negative 1 to the n plus 1. And then I was lazy. Let's show why this guy actually converges by the alternating series test. I have the series from n equals 1 to infinity of negative 1 to the n plus 1, 1 over 2n plus 1. So if I call my bn 1 over 2n plus 1, I see that bn plus 1. First of all, the bn's are all positive or non-negative. 2 for n larger than or equal to 1 or 0 even. Bn plus 1 is 1 over 2n plus 3, which is less than 1 over 2n plus 1, which is Bn, so it's decreasing. And 3, the limit as n approaches infinity of the Bn's is 1 over 2n plus 1, which is 0. So we get, by the alternating series test, this series converges. So we can add the endpoint, negative 1. And then we'll see if we can add the endpoint 1. When x equals positive 1, we get the series n equals 0 to infinity of negative 1 to the n, 1 to the 2n plus 1 over 2n plus 1, which is the series, infin the sum from n equals 0 to infinity of negative 1 to the n over 2n plus 1, which is essentially the same series we just had last time, which is also convergent by the alternating series test. So both endpoints are in. So what that says is essentially R can can be written as this power series representation if and only if x is in negative 1, 1. Why is that extremely important to me? Because this actually will give us a, lot, a way of calculating an approximation to pi. So what we know is arc tan, let's start, uh, let's go back, wait a second. What we do know is, hopefully, tan of pi over 4 equals sine of pi over 4 over cos of pi over 4, which is 1 over root 2 over 1 over root 2, which is 1. So tan of pi over 4 is 1, if and only if, and by the definition of inverses, arc tan of 1 is pi over 4. Now let's be clever and solve for pi in this. This says that pi is equal to 4 times arctan of 1. 
and now we have a power series representation and one is in the radius and interval of convergence so we are now allowed r was one by the way the radius was one we're centered at zero and our interval is negative one to one so what does that give us this gives us pi equals four times the arctan of one and now we have a power series representation for arctan of one so let's move that up pi which equals four times arctan of one can now be written as four times the sum from n equals zero to infinity of negative one to the n over two n plus one because we put x equals one into the power series representation which says pi equals four times now we're going to start unwinding this when n equals zero i get one over one so one minus when n equals one i get negative and then n equals one so i get three so one over three plus one over five minus one over seven plus one over nine minus one over eleven plus dot 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 this is how we can actually find a decimal expansion to pi and then if you want to find approximation you take off a certain portion of the power series and approximate pi using this type of calculation now for arc sine of x we notice this the derivative with respect to x of arc sine x is equal to 1 over the square root of 1 minus x squared what's that going to do well we're going to rewrite this this is going to be 1 minus x squared to the negative 1 half and then by sir isaac newton's binomial theorem we have that this is equal to the sum from n equals zero to infinity of negative one half choose n times negative one to the n x to the two n then what we're going to learn is we have to integrate this so what that says is the derivative of arc sine equals this so this says that arc sine x equals the integral from the sum from n equals zero to infinity of negative one half n negative one to the n x to the two n dx then we can switch and do term by term integration so let's do that first this is equal to the sum from n equals zero to infinity of the integral actually let's leave those guys out this guy is just a number which we can leave out of the integral negative one half choose n negative one to the n integral x to the two n dx what that now gives us is arc sine of x is equal to the sum from n equals zero to infinity of negative one to the n negative one half choose n x to the two n plus one over two n plus one now what we have to do is figure out what this negative one half choose n business is from the binomial theorem we know that negative one half choose n is equal to negative one half times negative one half minus one dot 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 negative one half minus n minus one over n factorial what does that do for us i'm going to clean this up this becomes negative one half times negative three over two this one becomes negative one half minus two n minus one over two i've got a common denominator which is negative one minus two n plus two over two which is negative 2n plus 1 over 2 which is negative 2n minus 1 over 2 so dot 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 negative 2n minus 1 over 2 all over n factorial now how many do i have this is the nth zero term and the nth term so we have exactly n of those things which is negative 1 to the n 1 times 3 times 2n minus 1 over 2 to the n n factorial i have i factored the twos out and i have n of those so 2 to the n and i have n negatives which i took out now what we're going to do is clean this up a little bit and i'm going to notice that that's 1 times 3 times dot 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 times 2 n minus 1 times 2 times 4 times dot 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 times 2 n i don't have that I forgot the negative one just a second negative one to the n so i'm going to multiply by one over two n n factorial 
So what I've done is notice that the top is almost, it's the product of all the odd numbers. If I had the even ones, I would get a factorial. So I add the even ones, but that's crazy. I add by multiplying by one, so I haven't changed anything. What that gives us is now on the top, what do I have? I have negative one to the n, and then I have two n factorial on the top, and then on the bottom I have n squared, and here what I notice is I have a two in every one, so I'm gonna factor it out. So I have two to the n again, times two to the n, and then n factorial and n factorial. Let's clean that up and give a final expression for arc sine of x. So we found the coefficient of what negative one half choose n is, it's this expression. And so I can put that in there now finally. This is negative one to the n. This was negative one to the n, two n factorial over two to the n, n factorial squared times x to the two n plus one over two n plus one. Now what I notice is I get negative one to the n and negative one to the n, which will cancel because it's negative one to the two n. So this will go away. And we have finally that arc sine of x in power series representation is equal to the sum from n equals zero to infinity of two n factorial over two to the two n n factorial squared x to the two n plus one over two n plus one. This is the power series representation for arc sine. You can find the radius and interval of convergence for this in the exact same way, but this is its power series representation. Please subscribe below and click the bell, notification bell, if you want to see more videos like this, then they will notify you when we have this, and I'll see you in the next video.